Hello, this is Katherine Dubberly, the Answer Lady. I'm a big fan of Kiss Looms. I greatly enjoy mine. And I am cooperating with Kelly at Kiss Looms to make you a playlist of all the basic techniques that you might ever want to know on all of the looms. So welcome and enjoy. I've done my plain row with just knits and purls, no crosses. And now is where, whether you were knitting the plain hat like this one or the cable hat, we join back together and we start doing the same exact thing. Notice that this hat pulls in at the top, and while it is a little bit gathered, not as much as you would think from all of this bulky fabric. How did that happen? It happened by do, starting to add some purl stitches in. I still need to weave in that tail, sorry about that. Right here, we began by knitting every fourth stitch as a purl stitch, and then changed to every other stitch, and the effect is to draw the top in so that the gathering is not as pronounced and bumpy as it otherwise would be. So for the next four rows, we're going to knit three stitches, purl one, all the way around the loom, whichever version of the hat you're making. Knit, 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 purl, and repeat all the way around for four rows. So let's all do that. Now four rows of knit three, purl one, are completed and it's time to begin knit one, purl one, for four rows. So let's do that. Knit, purl. Of course, if you have a different way of purling that you'd like to use, such as your purling hook or the continuous wrap, that's fine. Go around and make four complete circuits with knit and purl, and we'll get back together and finish. Here I am, all ready to bind off. Now, doing a bit of shaping by means of adding purl stitches to draw in is a very old knitting technique. No way of knowing who came up with that. And last time I did this hat, I just gathered it all in the normal way. But there is a loom knitter named Jeannie Phillips who came up with a way of getting this kind of crown with partly knits and partly pearls to lay even flatter than it does if you just gather it in. And let's use her method. First, we're gonna wrap our yarn three times around the loom, just as a measuring device to make sure that we don't run out of length. It doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm gonna be a little bit generous because I don't wanna embarrass myself with you watching by running out of yarn. Now we are going to just thread that into a bulky yarn needle. And here's where our last stitch was knitted. You can tell from the working yarn, it was really right there. So I'm going to go around and get all the purl stitches off first. It should be every other one, so I don't really have to look once I've started. But what I do want to do is avoid what I just did. I dropped my two knit stitches. So I'm going to need to be more careful. That's the difficulty about this particular technique. And that one came unknitted. So don't do what I'm doing. Now the reason it happened to me is because I tipped my work up and the angle I needed to hold it at for you and me both to see it and the camera to see it was awkward. So let's try something a little bit different. It's okay if the purl stitches come off. So let me work like this so I have a bit more control over what happens to what stitch. They don't have to come off now if they don't want to. They will come off eventually. We just need to get every other one onto the drawstring. We're not even gonna draw it in yet. We're just gonna get them on. So I'm gonna go all the way around the loom doing this, picking up each purl stitch, trying not to lose any knit stitches. And I'll see you when I'm around 
and see what comes next. All the purl stitches are on to the gathering thread, and I have not gathered it, but I did pull the slack out. You can see it around there. Now we're making another trip around. I've already started picking up all of the knit stitches. Remember, some of the purl stitches might still be hung on the loom, but they should be on the gathering thread. So just flip them off and go around picking up the knit stitches. It is possible that something has dropped. I don't think I've got any dropped ones, but keep an eye out for that because it's not too late to rescue them if you need to. That's a purl stitch that does have a gathering thread through it. There is a second way to do this, and it's a sort of six of one, half a dozen of the other choice. It's easier to do if you use separate gathering threads. On the other hand, you will have more yarn tails to weave in. So in this instance, I elected to do it with one, which means managing the gathering is trickier. But it's not very bad, and I'll see you when I'm around.